So the first part of the technology, um, this is what we do for uh, to, to we, sorry, reduce the amount of traffic we send over the WAN. It's what we call data streamlining. So if you imagine these appliances have just been installed uh, on your network and all your servers are located in the, in the data center. So your first user in your branch office requests a file from the data center, um, perhaps in London. So a request goes across the network, goes directly to the server. That will always happen, which is an important point to make. Um, our technology will always provide information directly from the server. We will never attempt to uh, provide information from the edge of the network. Everything comes from the server. So a request goes into the server. As normal, the server would go to, uh, to respond to the client um, and send in the requested information. What the steelhead would do in the data center is intercept the traffic on its way through, break the data up into, uh, into smaller chunks, give each chunk a reference, and store all of that data and references on, on its own internal hard drive. At this point, we're just looking at patterns of data, zeros and ones. Uh, we're not interested in application types, in protocols, in file names. We're purely just looking at patterns of binary data. So we can then send the data across the network. At this point, we will apply some, uh, some compression to reduce the amount of traffic. And the steelhead at the other end will store, receive that information, store the same data, the references, the raw data on its own in internal hard drive. It will then serve it onto the client, um, who will have noticed, I'm sure, uh, some speed improvement, um, and there will have been less traffic sent across the network. Now, at this point, it's good. But it gets better as we start building up our, our, the references on our store, we start building up our dictionary. So let's say, for example, another user in that office requests the same file. That request goes into the server. Again, server responds with the intention of sending all that data across the network again. This time, the steelhead will intercept it, recognize that data, and instead of sending the raw data, we can send our references that we've created. References are sent across to the steelhead at the other end, who will pull the data from its own hard drive it's referring to, put the file back together, and serve it onto the client. So the way we, uh, we work, the reference itself is 16 bytes in size, and it can refer to several megabytes of data at a time. Um, we'll actually start to build references that are referring to references. We have this. Uh, tree-like structure, which goes up to a fourth level. So at the very top level, you can have one 16-byte reference, which is referring to a whole bunch of references underneath, and then um, the raw data at the bottom. So it's not unreasonable to expect several megabytes of data to be uh, sent across the network in a 16-byte reference. Now, because of the way we store the data, because we're just looking at patterns of zeros and ones in a completely application-agnostic manner, um, we're not just going to see this performance increase when people are requesting files that have been sent across the network before. We're able to recognize um, repeated data in whatever format it comes across. So say, for example, you pull a file across, you work on that file, make changes to that file, save it back to the server under a different name. All the riverbeds will see is 90% um, of, of the traffic going through which it's seen before maybe 10% that's new. And again, we'll start the process again, making new references for this new unique data. Um, it doesn't matter whether we've seen file the first time as an attachment to an email, and then it goes back second time as a file transfer, whether it's been in a PowerPoint file or whether it's been in a Word document. It's completely irrelevant to us. All we will see is that it's the same, the same data. So typically, well, it's not shown there. But typically, you can expect these units to be installed, spend a couple of days learning a lot of data, um, after which point the amount of data they learn will tail off an awful lot because so much of what goes across the network is repeated in some form or another. And you are very likely to see um, a 60% or up to 95% reduction in TCP traffic sent across your, the network as a result of this. So the second area that we're going to help in is um, we will improve the behavior of TCP across the network. The trouble we have with TCP um, when we don't have uh, one optimization in place is the inherent security measures that it, um, 
that it includes, whereby it's constantly checking that um, data is uh, is being received by by the recipient at the other end. It creates a lot of back and forth behaviour. Um, at the same time, if it feels that data isn't being received um, as, as efficiently as it should be, your window sizes are cut, and you spend a lot of time with uh, with small window sizes, perhaps 16 kilobytes, perhaps 32 kilobytes. If you're very lucky, then you might have quite a lot of 64 kilobyte window sizes. What we want to do is make that uh, a lot more efficient. So if you consider that we are repacking uh, every payload sent across the network with our references, with 16-byte references, which are virtually referring to potentially megabytes at a time, all of a sudden your window sizes are virtually increased. And we have maybe several megabytes per window rather than 16, 32 kilobytes. End result of that is we don't need as many round trips back and forth across the network where the latency exists, where it's causing us pain to transmit the data. So any application whatsoever that uses TCP uh, will see a benefit from, uh, from the referencing technology and the, uh, the benefits it gives us to, uh, to the, the performance of TCP itself. 